Okay. What is up, guys? I think this is working. Let me check to make sure. Hey everyone, I'm Jason. I'm a Los Angeles contractor and developer, and this is Buy, Build, Sell. If you're not a fan already, it's because you haven't watched the videos, go ahead, press subscribe right here, and follow along, because we have a ton of more great content coming your way. Today, we are excited to be bringing you a Q&A. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I do a Q&A every Sunday. Um, I get a ton of awesome comments about the Q&A. I think people really love them. The only issue is, is that I don't, one, I don't get a long form uh, way of communicating my answers. And two, I have to kind of keep it short because it's just one page. And three, I don't, when people ask me like a, a really intense question, I don't really have the real opportunity to give them a real answer because like, what do you expect me to say in, in, uh, in 120 words, 130 words? 200 words, it's impossible. So I am going to YouTube on this and I am going to be answering your questions in long form, giving you as much detail as possible about your questions so that I can hopefully help you. And it's, uh, you know, it's exciting. So I, I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys are excited for the answers and we will get started. So here we have them. I printed out the questions so you can see that uh, they are, they are, these are real questions from real people on Instagram. How old are you and when did you get into the trades and what was the first trade you did? I get this question a lot. Um, I look old, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm actually only 31 and um, I've been doing this for 11 years now. So I... The story I say, the story I tell, uh, is I was a starving musician. That's why on my Instagram, you can see there, I wrote there, retired musician. Uh, I, was a, I was a struggling musician, trying to find my way in the music world, and I needed work, I needed a job. So at the time, I was working at a pizza shop, I was in college, I was hustling, the best way to put it. I was really just, I was doing anything in music that I possibly could. So I'd be in studio from, you know, after college to morning and then, you know, my schedule was crazy. Um, I basically got a job working for a contractor and things sort of started to disappear. I wasn't really focusing on music anymore. I really started to enjoy what I was doing, working with my hands. Uh, I was a, I was a laborer uh, for doing demo. So I was just doing demo. I was doing cleanup, demolition, uh, things like that. And I went to go work for somebody who was doing development of uh, infill homes, uh, spec home development. And I was really, I started out being like just the guy on site who held all the paperwork and was there for inspections and uh, was there to be a lending hand, a lending labor hand. So I was doing everything from tile installations to brickwork to foundation and framing. I really just got involved in everything and anything that I possibly could. From there, I went on to partner with him uh, about a few years later, I don't know. And from there, I actually went out on my own. And I've been doing this on my own now for probably I think by now it's maybe like three years. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, question number two, what areas do you build in? I'm looking to build in Rancho Cucamonga. Why, uh, would you build in that area or is there certain distances you'd go to? So first part of the question, I build, so when people ask me where I build, um, Truthfully, if there's opportunity, I'll build there. That's the real answer. But I try to stick along the 101, and then I go from Brentwood to Pacific Palisades, and currently I'm in Mar Vista in Venice as well. Um, it's not like a rule of thumb. You know, if there's, a, if there's a place outside those areas that has 
a good deal, there's no reason I wouldn't go there. It's just where I am right now, okay? I go from Toluca Lake to Tarzana along the 101. I would not go out to Rancho Cucamonga for a build. Uh, I would do a design for that and I would be willing to go there every now and again to check on the job site and make sure that things are being checked for quality control, but I would not be willing to be a general contractor for a job that I can't go to every single day. Is it smart to buy a fixer? What is the best way to estimate a kitchen and bathroom reno? Is it smart to buy a fixer? Well, we'll start with that. Yeah, clearly plenty of people do it. It's not, uh, it's not a frowned upon action, you know? Uh, it's a very common thing to do. And the reason for doing it is you're getting something below value, right? If you're buying a home that is pretty, is in decent shape, has decent bones, but isn't where it needs to be for today's standard, you're probably buying it a tad below market, right? And you're putting your, your capital in to bring the value up, okay? For me, I buy homes that are demolished, right? I, I tear down homes completely. Uh, a fixer is something that does not deserve to be torn down completely, has good bones, has the good structure, uh, just needs a little bit of extra help, right? And if you can reduce your budget dramatically by not having to build a new construction home, you're going to put money in the right place, it'll increase your equity in your home, and you're doing well all around. So of course it's a smart thing to, build, to, to, uh, to buy a fixer. Um, how do you estimate what a kitchen and bathrooms are gonna cost? This is gonna sound like a mean thing to say, but get quotes. You know, like, the, the way I say it is, there are contractors out there who will charge you $12,000 for a model of bathroom. There are contractors out there who will charge you 18. There are contractors who will charge you 22. There are guys like me who charge 30 plus for a bathroom, okay? So, it's not fair for me to tell you what the cost is gonna be or what a kitchen is gonna be. You need to find the level of the guy you're looking for. If you wanna be talking to a guy who's doing kitchens here, I mean, there are guys beyond me who are charging $50,000, $60,000 for a bathroom. So, you know, you choose the level of execution you're looking to execute on and then find three of those guys and have them come out and give you quotes. That's the best way to do it, especially for a homeowner. And that's just my best advice, I think. I hope that works for you. What's your take on charging new construction or models per square foot and how does that work? <sighs> my take on charging per square foot. This is a very common question. How much do you charge a square foot? How much do you, how much are you gonna charge me for a 3,000 square foot home? Well, let me tell you what I view square footage as. Not only do I have a square footage price, I expect that my subs and the people that I work with have average pricing too. Whether it be linear foot, square foot, or just buy pieces of anything, you know, that means that you have your stuff organized. That means that you're paying attention to what you're doing and you're clearly on top of how you charge, right, and how you expect to charge for, for future projects, right? It allows me to say, I know that my guy charges X amount of dollars per square foot on a slab install, so I know when I charge my client, I have to put 20% on top of that. So I know that I'm making money or that I can deal with the issues that come up, right? What arise, that may arise from the installation issue, right? So here's how I view square footage pricing. It's meant to be a gauge. It's meant to be a barometer for you. When I say I'm going to charge X amount of dollars per square foot to build a house for you, that doesn't mean that's what it's going to be. A 3,000 square foot home may not equate to a $900,000 uh, build. It could be a million fifty. It could be eight hundred fifty. Don't get me wrong, it's most likely not going to be less. But it's the, it's the way that you tell how you're hitting your barometer. Okay, so it gives you a very good indication of pricing. And that's what it's meant for. If you go in thinking, this guy charges 
$400 a square foot. I'm building a 3,000 square foot house. He's gonna charge me 1.2 and that's it, you're foolish. And you're, gonna, you're going to be upset at the end of the day. You wanna make sure that it's the barometer. Okay, this guy is a, a 400 square foot kind of guy. That means he's executing at this level. Okay, so keep that in mind. How do you finance new construction homes? This is a huge question. A lot of people ask this question and a lot of people think that it's a hard answer. It's not. Uh, there are many people out there who do you know, wholesale type uh, construction or, or real estate. They have this similar infrastructure, um, but they kind of hide it and they make it seem like it's this, you know, unique thing that only they have. Um, it's either actual equity, so real money in your pocket, or it's financed, meaning it could be a hard money loan, or it could be a, cons cons a conventional loan. It could be any kind of loan. It could be from your uncle, it could be from your aunt. It doesn't matter who it's from or where it's from. It's always gonna be financed. For you, as the person who's borrowing the money, it's a question from you as to how you want to pay for that money. And that's where things get complicated because there's so many people out there that will do things differently for you to afford you the opportunity to do what you wanna do. You just have to find the right person who's willing to play along the same game that you are. So that's the biggest thing you gotta look for. Uh, how that money gets spent, right? You can get lump sum loans where they give you the money that you're going to pay them back with throughout the process, or they're gonna give you just what you need at that time. And, you'll keep on spending money and they'll keep lending you money. So the, the interest isn't on the full amount. There's so many different kinds of loans. I'm not the best person to talk to you about this um, because you're more, you're, you're more better off talking to someone who does lending that can actually offer you real services. Whereas from my perspective, you're only gonna get what I've, been, what I've, what I've taken and what I've used. So hopefully that helps you. If you're in a methane zone, do you mitigate or build raised foundations? I know you like slabs. So I am a slab guy. I like to install slabs most of the time. Uh, very rarely do I do raised foundations. Um, honestly, it's not that hard to deal with methane. So it, I, I wouldn't understand why you would just go up, go to a different step, just deal with it the way you would normally deal with it and do a regular slab on grade. Not that, not that crazy. How do I get my general contractor's license? I currently have a C33 painting license and I wanna get a general. Awesome. Well, getting your general contractor's license is a journey. It's a journey. Uh, in California only, because I can only talk about California, uh, you need four years of journeyman experience. You need people to sign off for that. You need taxes showing that you've worked for four years doing journeyman services. Uh, doesn't matter for what, for who. If you already have a license, a C33, uh, you will most likely just qualify to take the test. The question is, is do you know the information? Um, for most people, they don't. So I always recommend going to a online school or going to a service that provides the education so you can take those courses, learn that information, and even if it isn't retained up in here, um, it will be immediately used for the test. So you can take the test, you can pass it, and you can begin to learn the system uh, as you're in it, okay? So I really hope uh, that that helps, um, but yeah. Good luck on that, because that's pretty awesome. You know, if you're already running a successful business doing painting and you want to expand your services by getting a, by getting a G, by getting a B, you know, that's really fantastic. So I applaud you. Thank you very much for the question. This is a great question. Is hardwood in the bathroom a concern? Yes, yes it is, 
very simply, yes it is. I've, I've definitely played in that arena. I've definitely tried to do some things where I'm bringing wood into the bathroom. I don't like using the fake tile wood, so I actually use real wood. But there's like different designs out right now where like, you know, you're putting stone, you know, insert it into the wood or something like that. Maybe I'll try to find a picture and put it in here where like they do the staggered hexagon, which is really cool. I, li I like that design. Definitely in wet spaces you want to be using tile because you want to make sure that it's permeating through, go, goes to a water barrier of some sort and out to a drain if you have that or if not then it's just being caught there. Um, yeah, so I would definitely not be putting wood just arbitrarily in a bathroom. You know, you have to break it up to like those wet spots so that way you're not, you're not damaging the, the material. Can you tear down a home if it's not paid off? If so, what type of loan would that be? Well, that's a great question. I will tell you what I did. I can't give you the real truth because the real truth is unfortunate. No, you cannot. Uh, if a bank finds out, like if you have a conventional loan on a home and you tear down your home, your bank can repo your property or they can you know, call, recall the loan. You'll have to pay that loan off in cash or, or get a real loan real quick to pay it off and pay the bank off. Um, if you have a conventional loan, they will most likely do that to you. Um, I can't, <laughs> I've done it. I've done it before. Uh, and thankfully no call outs, no, Hey, you did this, you need to you know, pay back the loan. I I've, had a conventional loan, I've built a new home, I've refinanced the home, pulled that money out, paid back the old loan. So I mean, there's definitely ways to do it. It's a very intense situation to be in. So my recommendation is that if you're gonna go about doing it, make sure you're doing it with someone that you trust, make sure that you're counting on somebody who has the right experience for it because it can it can definitely bite you in the tuchus, as they say. Um, the cost of construction seems to be at an all-time high. Do you foresee this changing soon? Do I foresee uh, do I foresee construction costs changing anytime soon? Absolutely not. Not at all. Um, I see it only going higher. Um, with what happened this year with COVID. Uh, with all the things that are happening in the world, I only see cost rising. Uh, just for me personally, uh, just lumber alone is double what it used to be. So I'm seeing major cost being happening in real life right in front of my face. So yeah, costs are going up. Uh, labor will eventually go up. Uh, contracts will eventually go up. Everything's gonna go up. Uh, the only way it'll drop is if there's a serious drop in the economy. My thoughts on cement tile. That was the question. Um, I don't love them. Uh, they get dirty really easily. They're super porous. Um, but I use them all the time, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, a lot of the times what I do is I actually install them. I try to keep them as clean as possible. I will seal them once the grout is in. And then I will actually polish them when I'm all done with the house. And then reseal them twice just to keep them in good condition. It's a lot of work for, for a look, you know? Um, I do love the look, I do love using them, but I don't like to recommend them because they are a ton of work to work with. Um, are skylights prone to leaks? That is a good question. I personally do not like using skylights. Um, more than just prone to leaks, they're just tough to get in there, they're tough to service, they're <sighs> so many issues with skylights. You know, oh my god, my sky is so dirty, I can't clean it. And, you, and like, you know, you're you've got to get up there on the roof and clean the skylight. It's not fun to do. Um, and there are really cool skylights you can buy that uh, make things like that easier, but then they are even more prone to leaks because they have the opening ability, right? Uh, so that's just one more step you have to kind of watch out for. 
Are all skylights prone to leaks? No, most skylights should not be prone to leaks. Um, I'm sure there's better companies out there who make much better products, but the ones that are kind of just available and are installed, there's always something that goes wrong with them. And I, I use them, but I'm very hesitant to use them. I like I only use them when I really need light from one specific area where I know I can't get it any other way. So hopefully that helps. Hey, okay, here we go. These are the last sets of questions. So hopefully you guys learned a lot and let me know if you have any other questions I can get to. Hopefully next week we can do this again. All right. Would you close on a deal on a spec home that's halfway done or let the buyer wait until it's finished? I think he's asking if I'm in the middle of building a home, would I allow them to close on the house before I finish the home? That's what I think the question is asking and I will answer that question. If it's a different question, just re-ask it differently next time and I'm happy to get to it. Um, no, I would not. Uh, I actually state pretty clearly when people are interested in buying a home from me and I'm in the middle of construction, I always entertain that and I'm always uh, super excited about that opportunity. I make it very clear that the house is always going to be mine until the house is done. And when the house is done, then it becomes yours. Once you buy it, it's yours. But the house is always going to be mine until I'm done with it. Um, and that's just because people get too emotionally involved in the whole process. And I really try to separate that because it's not a custom home, it's a spec home. And, until, and unless they're willing to pay the price for a spec, for a custom home, it's a different conversation. So it's it's one or the other, you know, has to, has to work one way for one person or another way for the other. Do you charge a development fee plus take a profit percentage at the end of your jobs? If I'm partnering with somebody on a deal, there is usually a construction fee because there's costs that are associated to me for building the project. And then yes, there's a percentage split at the end of the deal. If, um, if I'm just building it for somebody and they're covering all costs, uh, different story. The common denominator is usually I'm charging a fee for actually doing the work. So hopefully that helps. Any interest in building a downtown high rise in your future? I feel like that guy might be a real estate agent. What do you guys think? <laughs> um, I, I have not gotten into the high rise uh, world, to be honest with you. So do I think about it being something in my future? Honestly, I don't think so, to be honest with you. My big dream is doing, uh, you know, a big development somewhere, like doing multiple homes in one, one plot of land and doing something like that, like 10 homes in one cul-de-sac, you know, or, or even who knows, maybe even bigger one day. Right. Um, but like, that's kind of where I want to go. I want to do like, you know, many, many neighborhoods to some degree. Um, that would be like a really, just a cool project for me to do. Um, but to, you know, shopping malls, sure, I think I would like to do that one day. Uh, you know, commercial use buildings is something I, I'm familiar with. But Skyrise, probably not, no. Favorite interior door handle. I use MTEC almost exclusively. I think I've been using MTEC for probably probably 10 years straight. Like, I don't think I've ever used another company. I've used other companies for like, quick this, quick that, but um, M-Tech all the way. You know, M-Tech, if you're listening, sponsor me. Uh, what's the biggest house you've ever built in terms of square footage? I think the biggest house I ever built was a single story, ironically enough, a single story, 10,000 square foot property. It was on, uh, just over half an acre, I believe. It, had, it was like an 8,000 square foot house and then two 1,000 square foot like guest house sort of things. So like that was probably the biggest one I did. Yeah. 
Well guys, that's it. I think I got through all the, all the questions that you have for me and I hope I answered them in full detail and gave you guys everything you were looking for in those answers. If I didn't, please let me know because I'd love to get to them next week. So just keep following along and make sure you write the question in again. Uh, if there was a concern, you can always DM me and let me know because I'd be happy to get to it at another time. Special edition questions that were on the questions that were on the the blocked the block section. Question for you: We plan to buy a teardown and build a new house. I know it depends on all the finishes you use, but can you tell us how much it costs to build a three thousand square foot house? Maybe on the cheap. Hmm. Well, that question was already answered by somebody else. So hopefully, uh, Ashley will see that answer in this video. Do you usually build homes with raised foundations or slabs? Why do you prefer one over the other? I usually build on a slab, usually because it's uh, structurally more sound, uh, gives me a level start starting plane to go with, less framing on that end, and I can just run in like it takes me, you know, two weeks and I'm flying through it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my reason for it. And I just, I'm, I'm more aware of the structural needs of a slab on grade, whereas, you know, I, I have, I'm not as used to building uh, raised foundations. Another question from the, the blocked section. So sometimes if the person uh, doesn't know me or anything like that, it goes to a different file. So uh, thanks for the great content. I'm always getting great ideas for my personal project I'm doing now. With that said, I want to remove a 1,000 square foot indoor pool and make that into a living space. Wow. Does that make sense? Do you have any other suggestions? That's a pretty big move. Um, truthfully, if you're going to be backfilling the pool and never reusing it, uh, the city will allow you to just drill some holes at the bottom of the pool and then just backfill that completely without breaking any concrete. So you just have to backfill it until about probably eight or 12 inches or so. You have to look at your plans to get that from you. But you do that and just follow the, 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 um, the details on the engineering for that and you should be fine. So you don't have to do any extra work. You just backfill it in there. Hopefully that helps, but definitely uh, review that with a soils engineer and your contractor. Do not just take my advice completely. You know, plus I also didn't give you that much detail, so keep it easy. Hey, any tips for flipping for first timers? My biggest tip for a first time flipper is hire somebody you trust to do the job for you and watch and learn. Follow along, pay attention to what they do, let that be an expense that you may make less money on your return of, of capital, but you're much better off having someone who knows what they're doing there than you trying to do it on your own. Okay. Uh, that's my biggest advice. Find somebody you trust. Biggest word in that sentence. Okay. Um, answered that question for you already. And what is the best way to increase the ceiling height on the first floor with eight foot ceilings and adding a second floor, but trying to salvage as much of the first floor, not to demo the first floor. So if you are trying to raise your ceiling on your house, you have an eight foot ceiling, you want to get a 10 foot ceiling and you want to add a second story. There is no cheap way of doing that. You basically have to reframe the whole entire house. I mean, you can leave all those studs there, but you're going to have to sister in everything and basically rebuild the whole entire home. So sorry, I can't help you with that. That's going to be a, a big project for you. But at least from my experience, there might be some secret ways, some uh, secret framing ninjas out there who might be able to help you with that uh, and figure out a different way to do it. But I don't know of any way. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video, for spending some time with me and uh, letting me answer some questions. If you got any value out of this and you really appreciated the video, please go ahead and subscribe. Anyway, guys, thank you so much 
for your time, for letting me answer a few of your questions. And if you got any value out of this, please make sure you subscribe, like the video, comment on what worked, what didn't work, let me know. I'm trying to make this thing better. So if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Uh, from now on, just please make sure you're watching the videos and keep it in touch. Uh, if you found me here, great. If you don't know, you can follow me on Instagram at JJP Construction. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.